your dwelling place. Because all this stuff happens for you because you made the right choice. You made the Lord your refuge. I want to turn over in my New King James Bible. There is a beautiful uh, rendering of what God has done in history uh, with the remnant connecting with what the Lord is putting on my heart today. I hope you find it uh, edifying. The idea of the remnant is that a small nucleus of God's people, preserved by His unmerited grace, right, unmerited grace, form a foundation for a new community devoted to His redemptive work. Long before the prophets, a of remnant theology may have been seen in God's preservation of Noah and the family and his family in the great flood. In the same way, God used Joseph in Egypt to sustain a remnant during a worldwide famine. It's also evident in the book of Deuteronomy where Moses warned Israel that they would be scattered. But the obedient, he says, this is Moses to the people of Israel that were going in through Joshua and Caleb, to conquer the Canaanite nations. He said, the obedient would eventually be restored to their homeland. This is found in Deuteronomy 4, 27 through 31. This concept was picked up by the prophets and applied to the Hebrew people. Through all the days of the kingdom of Israel, during the judges, all the way through to the end, and then up to the days of Christ, this idea was preserved that an obedient people would uh, be preserved by God even in the days of the Assyrian and Babylonian conflict. You know, because it's not about the races. It, it's, 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 we're all one blood. We, we all come from one. I would like to see blacks and white marry, and Hispanic and white, and Hispanic and black. It, it, it actually turns out a good, beautiful person. But beyond all that, you know, what, what's happening is, is that the distinct culture, if the fear of the Lord was in the European and that was brought here, our pioneer remnant forefathers, if they brought truth with them to our shores, well, it's been lost by the intermarrying with pagan peoples. You know, can you imagine the frustration of, of a, a real staunch Catholic when they marry a Jew and vice versa? I want to read from uh, Ezekiel chapter 11, a historical account of how the Lord encouraged his servant, Ezekiel, the prophet, who is, who is in the midst of, a, of an incredible heavenly vision. And in this vision, the Lord sets before him uh, the problems and the sins of the princes and the, and the leaders and the priests. And then the Lord marks the people that are, who sigh, cry, and mourn for the sins of the people. And by marking them, the death angel will not strike them. But all the idolatrous in the land will die. And that's what's going on here. In verse 11, Ezekiel, it says, Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the east gate of the Lord's house, which faced eastward. And behold, there were 25 men at the entrance of the gate. And among them I saw Jehenai, son of Azur, and Pelatai, son of Benaniah, leaders of the people. And he said to me, Son of man, these are the men who devise iniquity and give evil advice or counsel to this city, who say it is, is not the time near to build houses. Is not the time near to build houses? This city is the pot and we are the flesh. And I think the Lord here is, is referring to them. They're not listening to Ezekiel. They're not listening to Jeremiah. They don't understand the times or the seasons. They don't understand what activity is correct at this time to preserve themselves. He says, therefore prophesy against them, son of man, prophesy. This is what Ezekiel gets, this son of man. Oftentimes he gets this phrase over and over, son of man, son of man. And this is a foreshadowing, a prefiguring of Jesus Christ, who is called the son of man, most of all in Luke. He says, therefore prophesy against them. Then the spirit of the Lord fell upon me. And he said to me, say, thus says the Lord. So you think, house of Israel, for I know your thoughts. You have multiplied your slain in this city, filling its streets with them. 
They were just killing people off just so the high guys, the kings and the princes and all the royalty and the important people, according to their estimation, could live. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, your slain whom you have laid in the midst of the city are the flesh, and this city is the pot, which I shall bring you out of it. You have feared a sword, so I will bring a sword upon you, says the Lord your God. And I will bring you out of the midst of the city, and I shall deliver you into the hands of strangers and execute judgments against you. You will fall by the sword. I will judge you to the border of Israel, so you shall know that I am the Lord. What's the end of all this? Is that Israel would know that idolatry is unacceptable. That their sins and all their soothsaying and all their leaning on, on Egypt and Assyria for help in times of trouble, not praying, their wicked ways, their forgetting of God, they're not keeping the Sabbath, their worship of idols, they're letting their children pass through the fire uh, with Moloch, the god of, of, uh, of those folks, and, and Baal, and Baal worship. All this stuff they were doing, killing their own children for the sake of a false god, which we do in America, by selling them to the American ideal, by selling them to oh, get a job and you know get a college degree and that's it, that's, that's the Christian life. That's not the Christian life. That's not what the remnant does, people. Parents, I'm, I'm, I'm cautioning you, just because you and I have lived through decent economic times and, and we've gotten ahead and we've been able to prosper, that doesn't necessarily be, hold true for our children. They gotta think in a different, Babylon loves college because that's where they indoctrinate our children. That's, that's where they continue to, you know, they say that kids that go to church, 75% of them, once they go to college, stop going. So in college, they lose their faith if they had one at all. And that's another reason why you just don't release your kids. You, you got to cover them. You got to protect them. You got to build a foundation in them. And that's a, that's a sign that we're idolatrous, just like Israel. That, oh, just get a job, you know, get a good life, have a nice house. As if to say it's always going to be peaceful in America. We need to wake up. Wake up, American parents, Christian parents. There's more at stake than what you realize. The jobs that you think your kids are going to get just because they got a four-year degree don't even exist anymore. And if they do, there's too much competition. And the only way you're going to get those jobs is if you know somebody. And especially if you're a Babylonian, you're going to get that job. Yes, the Lord can bless his people, but he does it by them praying over every decision about how they're going to release their kids into society. You know, I prefer to look at it, how can we teach them how to take care of themselves with a skill or a business or, you know, how can we work together within the context of a real church, living, breathing, organized church in Christ, a living thing, an, or an organism of Christ that then could support itself with a tent making skill to continue to work the work of gospel going forward. That's what the remnant would do. But these guys were just killing and throwing their children into the street. And their friends, their Jewish uh, compadres, their the ones they had been uh, sworn to love and care for in a just fashion, they were just turning them over. That's what was going on. He says, Thus you shall know that I am the Lord, for you have not walked in my statutes, as I just described, and you have not executed my ordinances. You have not come to my temple and worshipped me the way I want. You have not kept these Sabbaths. You have not done the feast the way I have prescribed in the book of Leviticus. You are not doing it the way I commanded you but have acted according to the ordinances of the nations around you. We are just like Europe. In America, you'll see that we are just a little bit behind how the European way has, has gone. The, the Protestant movement in Europe has all but died. And all you have now is a brand new, you know, passion movement. You know, young people coming together. That's what they feel. It's, it's of God in a sense because if the thing is dead, and it's not real, it's just tradition marrying tradition, and it's religion marrying religion, just different forms, and it's no big deal, because God can overwhelm all that and save people. But what he's saying here, you've just adopted everything of the nations around you. You've adopted the stuff that I didn't want you to adopt. You, you, you've woven into your culture things that I hate. Now it came back about as Ezekiel prophesied that 